Hello and welcome back to what is probably the final thoughts and analysis video that I'll be presenting to you on these particular Transformers Studio Series figures. Those of you who follow my YouTube channel extensively will know that I have performed some great coverage over the past few months on the Studio Series Long Haul, High Tower, as well as Drift, as well as the brand new Dropkick figure. The reasoning behind why I'm doing this particular video is because we've got some brand new, awesome looking official promotional images direct from Hasbro, which I believe give us our best look at these particular releases yet and these figures are imminent to be released at mass retail anytime now. Kicking things off here we have the Transformers Studio Series Voyager class long haul. There isn't really much else to say about this particular release that I haven't already said in previous videos. I think that this particular figure looks absolutely amazing particularly in this image as you can see the paint applications as well as the detail on this figure as well as the overall movie accuracy are a dead ringer for the on-screen CGI render that we saw during the Revenge of the Fallen movie. I do actually have this particular figure on its way to me now as of this recording so expect a review of this particular release on my channel very very soon. Here we've got an up close and personal image of the torso section as well as of Long Haul's head and I think that Hasbro have done an amazing job in really capturing the kind of insectoid like design that the Decepticons primarily had in the first three live action movies. I really like the silver paint applications in the torso section and I really like the little mandible teeth right in the center of Long Haul's head. It looks absolutely amazing. Here we have an image of Long Haul in his construction vehicle alt mode and I also think that this too looks really really faithful to what we see in the Revenge of the Fallen movie. We don't get to see a lot of this vehicle in the movie however the glimpses that we do get of it it definitely looks very reminiscent of what we see here. I do like the silver paint applications towards the back of the figure to pick out some of the details such as the pistons. It does definitely harken back to the Revenge of the Fallen line where they had the Mech Alive gimmick where the pistons could actually move. So that is a nice added touch. I really like the details of the front section of the truck that looks really well as well. And here we've got probably our best image of Long Haul's leg configuration yet and this looks really cool. Now we haven't really gotten too many images of this particular mode and I'm glad that Hasbro have now finally released an official image just so that we have some kind of representation of where all the parts will actually end up when you transform Long Haul into his leg configuration so that it can actually combine to form Devastator. Those of you who have the Voyager class Rampage will also be able to compare how this particular limb looks next to that particular limb and I think that they're definitely going to look really really well with each other. I think the green and the red are going to contrast fantastically and the overall detail on this particular release looks absolutely phenomenal. Devastator is sure to be an extremely detailed and very movie accurate piece. Now as we're on the topic of Constructicons, here we have some amazing official promotional images from Hasbro of the Studio Series Deluxe Class Hightower. Now this is probably one of my most anticipated deluxes from this particular wave just as it's such an outgoing and outrageous looking design and I really can't wait to have this particular figure in my collection. This to me just screams what the Bayverse Decepticons look like and that was the fact that they were controversial and that they were unlike anything we've ever seen in the mythology. I really really like the kind of T-Rex-esque type of motif they're going for this particular release. I think that the details on it look absolutely amazing and I love how the claw section of the vehicle mode comes down and as if though it's some kind of weapon it looks really good and looking at the details of the face once again it is very similar to the rest of the Constructicons in the sense that it is this very Insecticon-esque looking head sculpt. I'd like how they haven't skimped out on the details and they really have made it look very very visually interesting. I really wish that we actually got to see Hightower transform in the Revenge of the Fallen movie. I think he would have made for a fantastic character. Here we have an image of Hightower in his vehicle form. Now I like how they've gone with the yellow colour much like they did with Scrap Metal. Scrap Metal and Hightower will actually combine to form the arm of Devastator. So the fact that they are very similar colours will make the overall look of that particular arm consistent. And these photos make me very very excited for the figure's eventual release. Turning my attention now to the only Autobot release in this particular Deluxe Class assortment, here we have the Transformers Age of Extinction Deluxe Class Drift. Now with every single new photo we've got of this figure, I found myself getting more and more excited for the figure's eventual release as it looks so much better than it did initially at Toy Fair. I must say that this figure is probably going to be the best representation that we've ever got for the movie Drift. I really like the colour distribution on it, they've finally gone with the more accurate black and blue colour scheme as opposed to the darker blue that they went with all of the original Drift figures in the Age of Extinction toy line. 
I really like the detail on the missile pods, as you can see in the robot mode. I like the blue highlights throughout the figure, and I think that the samurai armor looks really awesome. I also like how the propeller section is also detachable. I have seen it been able to be detached and plug onto the arms as well as the back section. So that is really good that you can actually remove that and make the overall look of Drift a lot more slender and agile like we saw in the movies. The head sculpt too is also really well done. And turning to his helicopter mode, we never actually got a Pacific figure for Drift in his helicopter mode in the Age of Extinction toy line. All we got was a reuse of a Voyager class figure, which wasn't accurate to the movie. This time we've actually got an accurate looking sculpt and it definitely looks a lot better for it. The design of the helicopter is very sleek, much like we saw in the film. And once again, I really like how they've actually used Drift's weapons in order to create the propeller section at the top of the helicopter mode. A great use of weapon storage and actually to me is a very clever engineering design move. And the final figure I'll be taking a look at is the highly anticipated Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Dropkick in his AMC Javelin Alt Mode. Now this figure is leaps and bounds better over the helicopter version. This one is just so much more accurate to what we see in the movie. Dropkick was a very well built, very bulky character. It definitely looked like he could deal some damage. That original figure was very skinny and very spindly and didn't look like it was much of a match for Bumblebee. However, if you have seen the Bumblebee movie, you'd know that Dropkick was definitely a very good villain for Bumblebee to face. Here we have an up close image of Dropkick's head sculpt and once again it's just so movie accurate to the film. It's very chunky and very detailed. Unlike the original version that we've got, I really like that very broad upper section of Dropkick that was actually one of Dropkick's most noticeable attributes in the movie was that he was the rather bouncer-like Decepticon that would definitely do Shatter's dirty work for her. This particular figure looks really well done and I can't wait to replace the helicopter version with this much more accurate looking car mode. Talking of car mode, here we have an actual image of the AMC Javelin that this figure will turn into and I actually do prefer my Transformers having land-based alternate forms as opposed to helicopter modes. So I'm a massive fan of this AMC Javelin alternate form. I really like the blue and black paint distribution. I think they contrast really well. And I also like some very movie accurate detailing such as the skull on the rear end of the vehicle, as well as the number 13 and the really nice silver painted engine at the front of the vehicle mode. So there you have it. That is my thoughts and analysis on some of these brand new Transformers Studio Series figures. Hopefully the next time I'm talking about these particular releases will actually be in hand when I'm doing my review, as I do think that these figures are actually due for release anytime now. I know that Long Haul is actually starting to trickle out now, and the Deluxes should be shipping out towards the end of this month, early July, so definitely stay tuned for those reviews when I get them in. These figures all look absolutely amazing, there is no release here that I think is a downgrade from its original counterpart. Some of the figures such as Hightower are getting their first ever entry into the toy line and he looks really really awesome. It's great to get some more Constructicons in the mix as the Studio Series Devastator is definitely one of the most hyped and will actually be one of the most sought after pieces from the Studio Series toy line. So it's really nice that we're getting some more Constructicons to help fuel fans' excitement for that figure's eventual release. I really like Dropkick, as I stated, he's a massive improvement over the original version, and Long Haul just looks absolutely amazing. He'll be sure to be probably the best out of this entire wave of Studio Series figures. Talking of Studio Series figures, I did just recently put out a review of the Studio Series Careside Boss. So for those of you who are interested on that particular figure, please check out my review. I'll be sure to leave an annotation above for you to click and it shall take you straight to the video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below. And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.